like right now, you know those uh, noise cancelling headphones you can buy? They cost a million quid. They're brilliant, but they're yes. very expensive, OK? I pray for someone I'm around you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, wouldn't that be good? Amazing. But the thing is, okay, right, Toyota has introduced a noise-cancelling car. I've got a picture of it here, okay? It's called the Crown Hybrid. Wow, that's a looker, isn't it? No. <laughs> and the other thing as well is it's got these microphones inside it, which it sort of re they record the noise made by the tyres in the engine and then play sound waves that are the opposite of that noise, yeah? Yes. And then that cancels the sound out. Yes. Well, what if you want to listen to the radio? You turn Terry Wogan on. It'll, be, if, it'll sound like that. What if your passenger's next to you screaming, Stop, stop, the bridge is down! You won't hear you it. Won't you won't hear, hear it. They haven't thought that through, have they? Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, can you? You can there. Noise, they'll forget it, it doesn't matter. Now, the Mexicans, the Mexicans have built a new car. Mm -hmm. it's got, uh, has it got a sombrero? No, it hasn't. Has it got a big floppy moustache? No. Well, like your a, boyfriend. It's a supercar. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, no, it's a supercar. Here it is. It's called the Mastretta MXT. Have a look at that. It does have a big floppy moustache, James. It kind of no, not really. It does. Are they Probably. going to put that into production? Yes, they are. Are they going to bring it to the UK? No. It's going to be available in California, where it'll come round and clean out your swimming pool. <laughs> um, do you know what Mexico is? Good. You know all Mexicans? No, forget it. Uh, right, now, you know, every single week you open up the newspapers and there's another story for, of uh, somebody who's blaming sat now for driving into something. You yeah. know what I'm on about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one this week. I've got a picture of it here, OK? These clowns uh, drove this van into this river and then said, oh, well, the sat nav said go down here. No, I'm sorry, that's not the sat-nav's fault. It's because the van was being driven by a blithering idiot. <laughs> it so is. He saw that and just carried on. Yep, yeah, sat-nav says down here, so right. I'll go in here. If it said, drive to the top of Beachy Head and keep going, would you do that? No. There's more of this stuff. Look, there's a, there's a truck driver here. He was driving from uh, Turkey to Gibraltar to, mm. uh, to deliver some... Uh, shall I say this again? <laughs> <laughs> There's another one here, look. There's a truck driver. He was driving from Turkey to Gibraltar to deliver some cars, and he ended up in Skegness. Even I know that Skegness is probably not on the way from Turkey to Gibraltar. Well, and he tiny, says this is sat now. How tiny does your brain have to be as you get on a cross-channel ferry to think, yeah, this is right. This is the quickest way from Ankara to the south of Spain. No, honestly, there's more examples here. There's somebody here, OK? There's a skip lorry got stuck under a bridge. Driver said, oh, it was the sat-nav's fault. It isn't. It's yours. Uh, and then, my absolute favourite, there's a woman here. I'll spare her her blushes, OK? Paula. <laughs> Seely. Age 20. But it says here that you drove into the path of a speeding train and then blamed your sat-nav. It, honestly, the train actually hit her car. Now, honestly, we've got to stop this endlessly blaming cars for everything and start mass executions of the stupid. <laughs> Take them outside, shoot them in the back of the head, and then nobody will get lost again. Uh, where are we going now? Over the page. Um, yes, yeah, a new car from Lotus. Here it is, look. Uh, that is a four-seater. It's got a 3.5-litre uh, Toyota V6 in it. It gives 280 horsepower. They reckon... 0 to 60 in under five seconds. And it's got some problems. Yes. No, it has, really, because, OK, what's Lotus's mantra? It's, I mean, lightness. They always want to make light... Well, Colin Chapman, yeah. Simplify and add lightness. Exactly. They always want to make light cars. This weighs 100 kilograms more than a 7.2-litre V12 Zonda. And it's not the best-looking car I've ever seen. And worse than that, they're going to do a hybrid version of it. Because the managing director of Lotus says he can't ignore environmental issues. Well, he was sort of ignoring them by running Lotus, wasn't he? Yes, if he, was running, if he was running a nuclear-free fair trade peace fudge company, then you, <laughs> you can say I'm not ignoring it. But what he should actually say... In fact, I'm fed up with this. This is what all car firm bosses should stand up and go, I don't care about the polar bears, so I've launched a three-and-a-half-litre V6 sports car to make human beings happy, because they're what matter. <laughs> anyway, Bilotti fans. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's going to be on sale at the end of the year, and it's called the Avora. And that's another problem. Mm.
Because Avora to me sounds like a provincial dress shop in Harrogate, catering for the larger lady. <laughs> it is. I'm going to pop down to Avora and see Beryl. <laughs> Bet you any money. Do you know what I mean by provincial dress shops? You don't, obviously. <laughs> Where did you buy that hat? <laughs> Where did you buy that hat? Uh, shop. Now, you see, you're being for. Where did you. Which town were you in? Uh, he bought it in Avora. In <laughs> Avora, the provincial dress shop. Uh, oh, now, OK, you know, we, we've talked in the past about the Ferrari Owners Club. It's a club for people who own a lot of things with a Ferrari badge on, but not an actual Ferrari. Uh, well, there's something uh, this week uh, new that they can waste their money on. Here it is. It's a radio. Do you know how much it costs? £1,500. What? what? If you take the badge off, it's 50p. <laughs> Well, that gives me an excellent money-making idea, then, because surely I could just go uh, find a skip, take some stuff out, stick Ferrari badges on and sell it for a fortune. Easy. Yeah. Ferrari owners club and snap your hand off. This single training shoe covered in an unusual slime with a Ferrari badge, £800. I've got a Ferrari anodized black TV stand with a caster missing, if you're mm -hmm. interested. How much? It's £4,000. £4,000. <laughs> they would. Anyone here from the Ferrari owners club? Oh, no, I won't go to your show. There's not enough chassis numbers in it for my taste. Hey, have you, have you seen this? Look, what? Have you seen this? There. Have they put a Ferrari badge on that? No. Well, sort of, because that's the new, Well, that's what you get when you take your Enzo into the dealership for a service. That's the they new, give you that? That's the new Ferrari <laughs> courtesy car. They've bought hundreds of these little Fiat 500s. They've had them painted Ferrari red. Like that makes a difference. Uh, it's got a special exhaust on it and it's got special limited edition writing engraved on the kick plate as you get into it. It's what, what does it say? My other car really is a Ferrari. <laughs> Honest. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Mind you, you know what you get when you take an Aston in? An Aston Martin, you take it in for a service, get what, guess what courtesy car you get? A Ford. Mondeo Ford, a what? Focus ST. A, a Focus KO? KO. Uh -huh. Ford Cat. A Cat. You see, that's its name. You just, otherwise it's noise. Cat? No, not a Cat. <laughs> Anyone else got any ideas? Mondeo, no, no. The answer is nothing. What? Actually, no, no, that reminds me. No, they don't give you a courtesy car. The, the other amazing one is I bought a Mercedes SL a while back, and it was an AMG one. It was an expensive one. Okay, and my wife took it in because it was uh, they'd recalled it. So it was something that was their fault. Fixed the brake. Said, oh, can I have a courtesy car? No. Well, can I call for a cab? And they said, yeah, there's a payphone over there. <laughs> yeah. What I'd like to do, though, you know all car dealers, are, they're all into greyhound racing. If you are, you've got a. They are, right? You're not. It, you, you, um, are you a car dealer? No. no. But, <laughs> but you know, how many car dealers have got greyhounds? A lot. a lot, exactly. As I was saying earlier, and these two didn't believe me. If you're unhappy with the service, bone his dog. <laughs> when, when you say bone his dog. I mean, take its bones Got out. Gotcha, sorry, I just for okay, a horrible It's moment. before the watershed. Explain <laughs> what you thought I was on no, about. No, it's fine, let's move on. Look, I tell you what, talking of terrible, last week, OK, James and I brought a bit of minor congestion to London, OK, in our large cars, because we got stuck for a moment or two, OK? Well, this week, London Transport went one better, because you know those bendy buses? Well, the bendy bit in the middle stopped bending, and it crashed. Here we go. Um, absolutely jammed up the centre of London. Do you know how many bendy buses there are in London now? No idea. 500. And guess how many accidents they were involved in in 2006? 500. 1,751. They just take them out to crash into things. What actually is the point of a bendy bus? I mean, what's, why is it bendy? Why isn't it just a double-decker? Well, I mean, they have 75% more accidents than other buses. There are three times more collisions with cyclists than normal buses. And I know why that is, because the drivers wait until you get halfway along next to the bendy bit on your bicycle, and then they turn right, and then you're just surrounded by buses. It's well, it serves you right for riding a bicycle. I don't yeah, care well. about that. <laughs> the reason they say they have them is because they've got three doors, and they can load and unload people faster. Well, when they say people, they mean old people. They want to go to the post office. But now they've had to employ 150, oh, I don't know, inspectors or something, at our expense, to go on those things to make sure people aren't fair dodging, because it's easier to do that. I honestly think the time has come to stop farting in our studio. <laughs> I honestly think the time has come when we stop thinking of these things as an alternative to the car, like we keep being told to do, OK? Because they're not. Nobody is ever going to say, no, I won't take the car this morning because I want to be chauffeured to work by a psychopath, catch cancer from its exhaust and sit next to a sweating rapist. 
This is the last one of this series. It may be the last series. Ever. <laughs>